The transfer portal is opened, and we want to break down the Big Ten and the Mountain West. It's officially transfer portal season, so we're back on the Big Mountain, where we bring you a detailed focus on the Big Ten and the Mountain West. Hey, it's great to have you here on the mountain. If you're new, I am JY. And this is my good friend, Steve. And Steve, I just got to say, it's hockey season. I know we're getting close to the end of football season, so I'm wearing a Quebec Nordic hat. I love it. I'm getting into hockey season. Love it. But let's stick with football. Old school, Old school hockey. Yeah. Hey, let's get into some uh, football, though. Let's go to talk about some transfers. Goodness yeah. gracious, it seems like every quarterback in the nation wants to transfer out of their daggone college team and go to another team. Uh, but we want to focus on the Big Ten. We want to focus on the Mountain West because those are the two conferences that we focus on here on the Big yeah. Mountain. So we're going to let Steve start with the Big Ten. I know we want to sprinkle in some pack uh, yeah. transfers as well, specifically the teams that are going to be going to uh, the, the Big Ten. And also we've been watching Oregon State and Washington State. And I know we I think we both have a little bit of update or want to talk a little bit about them as well. So why don't you start with the Big Ten? Yeah. So uh, so first of all, I want to throw out some numbers. Uh, I, you know, I was I was looking at all of the the Big Ten teams, including the current teams and the incoming teams as well, and, and just want to throw some numbers together and compare. Um, so leading the the Big Ten in transfers is is obviously Indiana and Michigan State. Mm-hmm. Both had coaching changes. You would very much expect it. Um, Twenty six. Transfers for Indiana, 25 transfers for Michigan State. I was a little surprised at the next two. Purdue's also at 25. They had a coaching change last year, so maybe there's some people that saw, you know, they just didn't fit in with the, the current system or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, now, fourth was Ohio State um, at, at 16. Now, here's the thing. They, they were on the, the cusp of a, a college football playoff berth, didn't quite make it. Um They've recruited a lot of talent. They brought in just wave after wave of four and five star blue chip recruits, uh, and there's just some guys that maybe don't make the cut there, maybe don't meet those expectations, and they know they've got even better people coming in. Um, so, you know, I was a little surprised, but maybe not surprised um, with Ohio State at 16. Yeah. And then we look going all the way down the list, Northwestern, which I'm wearing my Northwestern Wildcats hat. There you go. Uh, I love this hat. Uh, they're only at three. You know, so. They, they obviously these guys have bought in you yep. know all of Pat Fitzgerald's guys it looks like have bought into the new coach yep. um, who was nominated for coach of the year um, and you know they, they had a great season as mm-hmm. we've talked about multiple times where they really came back strong finished with a winning record um, so only three transfers there Penn State also with only three transfers and then our two playoff teams Washington with only two yep. guys that just they, they weren't going to play they need to move on and Michigan you know, they've really circled the wagons, so to speak, and they have zero transfers. Everyone's on board, you know, and they're they're, they're hoping for a national championship. Right, so, right. Um, so those were just some numbers. Wanted to throw those out there. And then uh, I had some specific uh, – are we ready to talk about specific players? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, okay. let's do it. So the big – like you mentioned, quarterbacks and, and out of the Big Ten, out of the, the current and future teams, we had two – Two really big quarterback names, Kyle McCord at OSU. Right. You know, almost led his team to the playoff where we had an undefeated season all the way to the end of the year. But you know, as you know and as we've talked about, th- he was up and down. Some some weeks looked awesome, and other weeks just looked like he couldn't get out of his own way. Um, you know, and, and he just honestly he was kind of, he was treated pretty roughly by the Ohio State fan base. I believe yeah. he had uh death threats after they lost mm. to Michigan. Crazy. Um, and the kid played I mean, he's maybe not at the level that they've expected there with quarterback play, but he played his heart out, had a chance to win on that final drive, was leading the team down the field. They were right in it against Michigan. So, I mean, a couple plays go their way, and they had an undefeated season and would have been in the college football playoff, but didn't go that way. The fans kind of reacted poorly there um, because they have such high expectations. So Kyle McCord, he is in the transfer portal. Mm -hmm. Um, To me, he's one of the biggest names um, in there. It looks like right now um, he's taking a visit to Nebraska here coming up this week. We've also seen rumors he may go to Miami. Um, so, you know, that's kind of his situation. I, I thought I saw Nebraska was a done deal. You know, I, maybe maybe not. Maybe not. You're the Big Ten guy. But yeah. I, I, I saw uh, a couple things earlier today. We're recording this on a Sunday. It'll yeah. get released on Monday. 
Uh, but I, I thought it looked like the Nebraska thing was was definite. So to me, nothing is a definite until you know paperwork is signed and they do like the official announcement, or whatever. Sure. And I haven't seen that. Yeah, there was a lot like there was a lot of, of evidence of him going maybe to Miami. Mm-hmm. What what I know, what I've seen for facts right now is that he's going to be visiting Nebraska. Maybe okay. he already told them yes, he was right. good, and people are assuming that. I'm not sure. Okay, uh, but it sounds like he's going to be visiting Nebraska along with his teammate Julian. Fleming mm-hmm. um, was a was the number one receiver a few years back in the recruiting class. Um, was heavily recruited by Penn State, end up going to Ohio State. He's been hurt. He you know he's had shoulder issues and other issues his whole time there. Yeah. Um, really good leader, great blocking wide receiver, helps with the running game, but hasn't had that that breakthrough offensive production. Um, so he already visited Penn State. Mm-hmm. He has a good relationship there. They're very much interested. But from what I'm hearing, he's also he's going to visit Nebraska with Kyle McCord, and they may end up being a package deal. You know, okay. for a quarterback to go and and have someone he can trust and depend on that he's been playing with a couple years, yeah. that may end up being a package deal. Okay, all right. Um, the other big quarterback uh, that we want to talk about in the Big Ten that I wanted to mention, Dante Moore, mm-hmm. UCLA. Um, he's transferring. It looks it. The, all the tea leaves point to Michigan. Mm. I don't think anything has been um, official yet with that. You know, he has said good things, and, and people around him have said good things about Michigan. Michigan's obviously interested. You know, they're losing their quarterback most to the draft, most likely. Yeah. Um, so, look, that that's a definite possibility. Now, Dante Moore just did not play very well in UCLA. He did yeah. not live up to those expectations. People were looking at him as one of the top draft prospects. Uh, well, top college quarterback prospects, hopefully leading to a draft prospect later. Sure. Right. Just didn't work out in UCLA. Can he go to Michigan? Is Jim Harbaugh going to be there? Um, can Jim Harbaugh get a hold of him and develop him? That's another big one. Um, one other name I wanted to mention in the in the Big Ten, uh, Jay Sean Barham. Uh, Barham. Okay. Um, really, really solid linebacker at Maryland. Was heavily recruited by Penn State. Um, there were some rumors last year that he looked at transferring to Penn State last year. Okay. Um, Penn State may be l- losing a couple linebackers either to the draft or to position changes. Um, so it would be a natural fit for him to go there. It also looked like he maybe was interested in Oregon. He may be someone who's maybe kind of looking for a uh, an NIL incentive, yes. which I know we're going to talk about on another episode, right. um, how NIL, how important it is, how it's been changing. But he's a big name. And then, um, oh, you know, over in the pack, um, I don't know if there are any of these you want to talk about. Yeah, a couple of them, so go yeah. for it. Yeah, okay. No, All right. So the big one, you know, we've been following Oregon State, you know, even though they're they're not in either one of our conferences, we kind of adopted them. Right. They were hoping to keep – so they're basically losing – it looks like right now in the portal they're losing both of their quarterbacks, their starter, DJ uh, Ugalele, mm-hmm. I think his, his name is pronounced. Yep. Um, you know, he had been a transfer from Clemson, came there, played really well. It was looking 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 really good. Um, there this season, he was kind of miffed about you know when the when the coach left there as a lot of people were. We've seen some rumors. At first, there were rumors he might follow that coach to Michigan State, even right. though there were he was mad about the way he left. Uh, at least his dad was. Um, but now it looks like maybe all the smoke is headed towards Florida State. Um, and then their backup quarterback, Aiden Childs. Um, you know he was a highly touted recruit. Yep. They were really, really hoping to hold on to him. Yes, they were. With their coach going to Michigan State, he's entered the portal, and all of the the smoke uh, is, you know, is is just there's tons and tons of smoke that he may follow his coach to Michigan State. Yeah, and uh, it definitely looks that way. Uh, that I think Giles and I know Oregon State was hopeful yes. as, as soon as DJ hit the portal, they went, hey, as, as long as we can keep Aiden, we'll be yes. okay. And then a few days later or whatever it was, he hits the portal. Yes. I agree with you. I think Trials is likely to go to Michigan State with, with Coach. Um, I actually saw DJ Ugalele uh, in looking at uh, Louisville. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that could be a spot that he ends up. Um, again, not a definite yet, but um, FSU, Louisville, or maybe some a- ACC teams looking to uh, maybe u- utilize his services down in, in the south there. So, And I, I also, I think I saw a statement from his dad or something on Twitter that they may even look to kind of get some uh, draft input because it's possible he could go in the draft. If they're not getting the input they, they're looking for, then he would obviously look for another team. Get, right. Get better, maybe get some NIL money yep. and get yep. another season of development. For sure. Yep, yep. Uh, another one I wanted to mention was Cam Ward. Yes. So maybe you had him coming up since yes, we're on the yeah, Pac-12. But 
you know, he, he's obviously leaving Wazoo there. Yeah. Um, I, what I have been seeing is Ohio State is maybe very much interested in him. I, I'd like, I'd actually like to see him go to Ohio State. Yeah. I think, you know, that he'd, he'd be a different type of uh, offensive threat than what McCord was able to give them here this year. Mm-hmm. I think he'd fit well in there. I, I don't know if it's going to be a definite or not, but it seems like there's a lot of smoke coming in that direction. So I don't know if you've heard any more on that or not, but um, I think that'd be really interesting. Same thing. All the all the smoke looks like to Ohio State. Originally, it sounded like Ohio State was really interested in uh, either Dante Moore or Cam Ward. That yep. seemed to be their two targets. Yep. And it just, it, I mean, anything could end up, it, it could go any way in any direction. But at this point, it looks like Dante Moore probably going to Michigan. And, and all the smoke is, is pointing to Cam Moore towards Ohio State. Now, as a Penn State fan myself, <laughs> I'd, I'd rather not see him uh, at Ohio State. Yeah, uh, I'd rather, I'd much rather see him stay in Washington State. I think he had a great uh, season up there. Agreed. Um, it, it's just kind of, the, the, and it's hard to tell. So, at a first snapshot, you look at it and you say, okay, the you know Oregon State, Washington State losing some players or mm-hmm. whatever, and maybe it's because of everything going on with the pack um, disbanding or, or shrinking or whatever. Yeah. But really when you look at it, nationwide is, like you mentioned, quarterbacks, oh. quarterbacks, quarterbacks. Um, we, we touched briefly on an NIL. It sounds like the going market for a start, a high level starting quarterback, is at least a million dollars for wow. an NIL deal. Okay. Possibly, I've seen that Cam Ward could could get possibly up to two million dollars at mm. Ohio State. I mean, that's tough to. I don't know if Oregon State and Washington State and teams like that can compete with that yeah. as far as NIL. Yeah. There's certain teams, and even Nebraska, even though they haven't been um, like huge players in the Big Ten. Apparently, they have a really, really good NIL operation going, so okay. which kind of makes sense where you see Kyle McCord down there. Um, so that's the thing is quarterbacks are on the move. They're looking to find a good place to showcase their NFL talents, and they're looking for money. I mean, they're yeah. marketable. They are valuable, yeah. um, and they're, they're on the move, and they're looking for, for big deals. Um, I did have a couple other players. Yeah. Um, uh, Jermon McCoy from Oregon State, also in the transfer portal. Mm-hmm. Uh, Akil Arnold, a safety, is also in the in from Oregon State in the transfer portal. And then in addition to Cam Ward at Ohio State, Josh Kelly, or mm-hmm. I mean at Washington State, Josh Kelly is also in the transfer portal. Yes. I saw some rumors maybe he would go with Cam Ward to where okay. he was going. And and I mean Ohio State already has a loaded, yeah. absolutely loaded wide receiver room. Uh, but if he, you know if he was able to take his his kind of blanket wide receiver mm-hmm. security blanket wide receiver and combine that would just be crazy at Ohio State. So I'm 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 personally hoping that doesn't happen. Yeah. But we'll keep an eye on that. That's those are all the names I have. Did you have any other names? Yeah. One other one, uh, and we could do a whole episode just on quarterbacks. Yeah. You know, even just Big Ten and Mountain West quarterbacks. But there is one I want to just bring up, um, and it's a team Oregon that's going to be joining the yes. the. Um, the Big Ten, and Dylan Gabriel, Oklahoma's quarterback, uh, going to Oregon or looking to, I don't, again, I'm not 100% sure if it's final yet. I think this one actually might be final. Uh, But Dylan Gabriel going to Oregon to, you know, fill in for Bo Nix. Obviously, he's going to be playing his last game here in in a couple weeks for the the Ducks. And um, they're restocking the cupboard here, getting a great quarterback from Oklahoma. So. I, that, that and to me that actually may end up being the 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 most influential transfer portal uh, addition in the off season. Uh, you have a guy he I believe he has something like forty seven career starts, so tons of experience. He was a Heisman Trophy contender this yep. year at Oklahoma. Yep. He's replaced so Bo Nix I uh, set the NCAA record with sixty career starts. I think it's sixty career starts. Okay, and so this guy Dylan Gabriel coming in, he could. Pass and and you know break Bo Nix's record for okay. career starts. You could have that two in a row. And I and Dan Lanning, I think he you know he likes that at Oregon, that experienced quarterback. And we yeah. saw how successful Bo Nix was this year. And we're yeah. talking two different games, maybe two or three plays in two different games, and they're or maybe even just one game in sure. the Pac-12 championship. Sure. And they're in the college football playoff. Yep. Um. So you know it's Oregon, absolutely loaded, great coach, looking really great for next year. Their only question mark that I saw was how are they going to replace Bo Nix? And it looks like they they hit it out of the ballpark. I, uh, Oregon's going to be a dangerous yes. team next year. When I saw that, I went, 
Makes sense. Yeah, they, they, it's going to be phenomenal. I'm, I'm so excited to see them in the Big Ten. It's going to be great. Them in Washington. But, yeah. hey, let's get to the Mountain West. I'm going to start a little bit the way you did yeah. and say, you know, the two teams that, that I found to have the most uh, players transferring out of their program, number one on the list, San Diego State, yeah. number two on the list, New Mexico. So again, two programs just like with the Big Ten that are losing their head coaches. Um, so San Diego State, the last number that I saw was 21. So not quite as high as some of the numbers you had at the Big Ten, but I think 21 would have been third or fourth on the Big Ten list. Yeah. Um, they're losing two of their top three defensive backs. They're losing six O linemen. I'm not sure how many of the six are starters, but you can never have enough O-linemen for Pete's sake. Right. So, I mean, they, they are taking a, a pretty big hit there at San Diego State. And I'm, I'm anxious to see what happens uh, with the quarterback situation. Yeah. I mean, yes, Maiden was there and he played quarterback. He's not a, a natural quarterback. He, he played fine for what yeah. he is. They need a, a real true quarterback. Um, so a lot of turnover here at San Diego State. Now, you know, they're losing 21. Who knows how many they're going to bring in maybe with the transfer portal, but a, a lot of turnover. And New Mexico, 19. They're turning over 19. Not too much of a surprise. Yeah. They're losing their, their uh, coach, one of the bottom feeders in the Mountain West. Yeah. Uh, so they're having a lot of turnover there too. Can I say something about uh, San Diego State yeah. real quick? Mm -hmm. doesn't surprise me at all they're going from. We talked about Brady Hoke teams. He, he has been known for running the ball, develop, developing offensive linemen yep. to run the ball, ground and pound game, play solid defense, yep. um, and which is a total different style, I believe, uh, than the new coach, which I think is younger, more offensive-minded coach. Mm -hmm. So not only do you have a coaching change, but you're going in an extreme different personality, right. style, everything. So it doesn't surprise me at all. No. Yeah, when I saw two of the top three D-backs – I mean, I, I would assume that's almost all coaching. You right. know, he was a defensive guy, yep. and I'm sure that's why they're leaving. Um, so I want to start. I'm going to start with Boise and UNLV, the two teams that were in the Mountain West Championship game. You know, with Boise, it's everybody knows at this point. Uh, Talon Green has has entered the portal. The quarterback, the sophomore quarterback, there. He has met uh, and traveled to Arkansas. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see where he ends up. He has left the door open. In terms of maybe being able to come back to Boise or being willing to come back to Boise, I'm not sure that's necessarily going to be the case. I think I think he's going to be off some other place. But I know he's he's looking at Arkansas as well as a few others. Eric McAllister, the receiver that left uh, right before they fired Avalos, um, again a sophomore receiver was their stud receiver, yeah. really really good receiver from Texas. Uh, I have seen, you know, if he's going to look to go back to his home state, TCU, I think is very interested in him. Uh, but if he's looking outside of the state and doesn't want to go back to Texas, you know, are you, look, are you looking at an ACC team? Maybe you're looking at North Carolina State. Um, I don't know. But I know TCU definitely has a lot of interest in this guy. And he's a phenomenal receiver uh, yeah. for a sophomore. Back to the NIL thing, the teams in Texas, they've got money. There, yeah. There's oil money down there. If, if NIL is a concern at all, and if, if he has interest from Texas teams, I think that's going to be hard to pass up. Yeah. The, the, you know, it's, it's that combination down there of, you know, he's, it's his home state, like you mentioned, and they've got the NIL money. If they're interested, I, I think that just makes a lot of sense. Yep, yep. Um, and then some good news for the Boise side. They've named their head coach, Danielson. I've seen several interviews with him. He's a fun guy to listen to. Yes. Very enthusiastic. Loves Boise. Mm -hmm. um, really excited for them. I also listened to some Genty interviews. Obviously, he is staying. That's huge. Um, it, it is huge. And, you know, I, I just think they have a lot to build around here. It'll be interesting to see how they play the bowl game here in a week without having a quarterback. So both of their quarterbacks can't go. T. Green is obviously in the transfer portal. Uh, and Madsen is, is injured, so yeah. he can't play. So they're going to have their third and fourth string quarterbacks that really haven't played this year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it'll be – but when you got a running game with Genty and Halani, yeah. uh, they should be just fine because um, I believe there's a lot of UCLA Bruins fans. This isn't a bowl episode, but yeah, yeah. there's a lot of Bruins uh, – or. Uh, players that are going to be sitting it out in that yes. game. So I think this Boise State's going to be fine. But anyway, that's where we're at with Boise. J huge. Uh, the, honestly, the biggest transfer portal news, I think, in the, in the Mountain West, in my opinion, uh, is Genty staying. I, I think agree. He has a good shot of being the best player in the in the Mountain West yep. next year. Um, Offensive so, player of the year this year. Yeah, exactly. And, and could be just the best overall player next year. Yep. Um, and so him staying there, absolutely huge. And I think really sets Boise back, sets them up to get back to where their expectations are, where 
They're, you know, they're a no doubt surefire in the in the the championship game this year. They kind of had to run the gambit to get there. Yeah. But also in addition to that, where they're that national name, and some things could have gone some different ways. Yeah. And I could definitely see them next year challenging for a playoff spot. Um, just and, and just having him back is so huge for that. Yeah, and by no means are we Boise homers here no. at all. I know I did it. We did a short on Genty when that yeah. news came out because I agree with you. That's one of the biggest names mm-hmm. in. Uh, if if people have watched these games, and this is not Boise homerism, nope. this is watching a phenomenal talent yes. in the Mountain West. Really enjoyed watching him play. Really happy we get to see him play again yep. uh, this year. The Mountain West should be happy he's staying Absolutely. in the Mountain West. Huge. Um, so let's go to UNLV. And a little controversy here. I'll be honest with you. So Jaden Maeva, mm-hmm. it came out. You sent me a text that, he's, that he hit the portal. Mm-hmm. The only thing I could really find on this was through College Football Network, mm-hmm. and I believe it was a cut and paste from MSN yeah. that had the same daggone thing. It's not on any other website. Okay. On three doesn't have him listed. Mm. Um, so maybe it was like a tweet thing, but he hasn't actually entered the portal yet. Yeah. I don't think he's truly in the portal right now. Okay. I don't think he is. That doesn't mean he won't be or hasn't said that he wants to be. I don't know what he's waiting for if he's going to be. Yeah. But he is not on any list that I've seen. And I have checked several of yeah. the websites that I trust at having this information and he is not on them now there there are articles out there cfn has an article saying he he's going out so be that as it may you know if he were to go out where would he go you know san diego state maybe (laughs) just talked about them needing a quarterback so if he wants to stay inside but hey look up in the uh, pack two right now oregon state wazoo would they have any sort of interest so i think they're like you say there's going to be options but i'm not i'm not a Sure, I don't think he's in the portal right now, even though there's an article from CFN that says he has entered the portal. So, you know, part of the process of going in the portal is the, the players have to tell their coaching staff. It might not be their head coach. It could be, a you know, a staffer or whatever. Tell yeah. them, I want to be in the – and they are required when they say they want to be put – they have to enter them in the portal. And so maybe the maybe the news broke because, of, you know, they told a reporter, they told someone he's definitely going in the portal – but maybe he had some kind of conversation with the coaching staff there right. and hasn't made a final decision to go in the portal yet. It would be so. First of all, I, he's got he's going to have a lot of options. Mm-hmm. It would be awesome to see, see him stay at UNLV. I hope he does. It, it would be phenomenal for both UNLV and for the Mountain West. Yes, like you mentioned, if he does leave, I mean his 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 talent level and you know I love calling him a dynamic player. He really yep. is yep. Um, dynamic player, both with his arm and his legs. And, and his youth and the way he, I mean, he just had composure. Yeah, he had some turnovers now and then, but composure all season kept his composure. Um, you mentioned a couple good landing spots up there. Oregon State, Washington State, probably going to be looking for quarterbacks. Yep. Um, so I think he will have options, e- even though there are a million quarterbacks yes. in there. But it would be really interesting. That would be huge for next season if UNLV could keep him. Yeah, you know, I, I hope they do. As I said, I, I couldn't really corroborate that, and that hit early on. Yeah, it was really, early. It, it really early on. We were all surprised. Yes, I think. and there has been nothing since. Now yeah. you can still find that article, but I, I don't think it's accurate, quite frankly. Um, so Air Force, one that just hit recently, running back Eldridge the mm-hmm. third. Uh, he's a senior. He was their second uh, running back uh, behind Michael or Michelle. Uh, this year, he's the one that broke some big plays. I remember watching uh, in the Wyoming game and some other. I mean, he would just gash defenses at times. Now they have a whole bunch of running backs, but yeah. he's one that really stood out to me that could really get yardage under his feet. Um, so he's actually just recently done it um, in terms of going into the portal here. So a little bit of a loss there for Air Force, but they're a running team. They'll just restack with some other guys and, you know. And, and Air Force is a unique, obviously, being a service academy. Right. You were saying he was a senior. They don't, from what I understand, like they don't redshirt people or anything like that. So it's possible he's used up his eligibility at Air Force, put just putting his name in the portal to. I, I don't know what his military commitment is That's, going to and be. And I don't either. I didn't have a chance to look yeah, at yeah. that. But. Each of the branches are are can can do things different. There yeah. can be waivers. Sometimes yeah. people go into the reserves. So it's possible he just kind of put his name in the portal so that maybe he has to go do a year or two of service and wants to come back and 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 play somewhere else. Yep. Yep. Uh, so Fresno, backup quarterback, Logan Fife. So the guy that was apparently early on kind of 50-50 with Keen. Keen yeah. gets the starting job. 
And really, you know, there for a little while when Fife got in, I thought he did okay. Yeah. But there at the end of the season yeah. when Keane was out for a couple games, really could see the dramatic difference between. Now, of course, Keane's getting those first team snaps, if you will. He's getting more yep. time. Uh, but Fife said, okay, you went with Keane. Yep. I'm moving on. So he's done at Fresno. He'll likely move on. I, you know, who knows where he's going to go. He was a, a backup, really, this season. Yeah. But um, And then a linebacker, Raymond Scott, a senior, uh, one of their, their uh, starting linebackers. There are 22 tackles, 10 solo this, this season. So a little bit of a, a defensive loss there for the, for the Bulldogs. And then another quarterback here in Hawaii, Braden Shager. Um, who threw the ball really well this year, started every game for them. I mean, they barely had anybody else throwing the ball this season. He played almost every snap. Uh, He wants it out of rainbow land. So, um, you know, I don't really blame him. They actually had a decent list of players that are are looking to go. I didn't write the total number down. Um, But, you know, they have uh, a running back in Jordan Johnson. He was kind of their number two guy. He's looking to get out. A lot of players down there in Hawaii that are that are looking to get out of out of Dodge. It's tough out there. I mean, the the, the kind of the schedule they play and the travel and all that stuff. It's a it's a unique situation. It's it's I don't blame any of it. I don't either. Um, then, you know, I'm not going to name the other teams. The only one that I'll say is, um, I mentioned to you before the, the uh, we got on here, Spencer Petrus, who I guess was the third, probably the third quarterback for um, Iowa. Yeah. He's actually looking to transfer to Utah State, so I bring it up because it's a Big Ten and a, a Mountain West school. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and Utah State's got a heck of an offense. I don't know what kind of arm this guy has. Um, they have a great quarterback as it is. But, you know, when I saw, oh, look, there's an, an Iowa player looking to come to a Mountain West team, thought I'd mention that as well. You know, Wyo, San Jose State, CSU, uh, Nevada, no real big name, just a few players. For, I mean, Wyo, I think, had had two, and one of them was the running back that left midseason, James. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that I don't even consider that really a, an ad at this point. So those, those teams really aren't losing, at least right now. It looks like they're not going to lose a whole lot to uh, the transfer portal. So, that's what we got. Yeah. You, you mentioned talking NIL. Right. Uh, so, we're going to do an, our next episode, which will probably be out on Tuesday, uh, will be NIL focused. I know Steve has some things he wants to talk about specific to that. There's a lot going on. Court cases coming out and people suing people and things getting cray cray up in here. Yep. So, we're going to break down some of that here uh, on the next episode. And with that, hey, we'll see you next time on the Big Mountain.